So, uh, yeah, th this is uh, wonderful. Uh, we have a strong, in my group, a strong interest in the uh, interaction between environment and health. Uh, and this certainly includes uh, genome engineering of uh, agricultural species. This is my conflict of interest slide. It's, you don't, <laughs> it ta it ta it's, it's on our website if you want to get into details, but it, it, it takes more than a village to sometimes achieve change. Um, we have this design, build, test loop uh, where, and, and we have, a, we uh, benefit from a huge exponential change in some of these technologies. And we also have to, as a consequence, be very cautious about what we aim these technologies at. And by exponential, I mean faster than any exponential we've ever seen in any technology, including the, the quite breathtaking uh, exponential for uh, computers and electronics. Uh, even on that fast exponential, it should have taken us six decades to get from a $3 billion human genome to where we are today, which is around $800. Uh, and it continues to plunge, and, and this is one of the things that my lab does, is focuses on reducing costs, making it accessible to people all over the world, and uh, improving safety and quality. So this, this law, whatever it is, is really more of an observation. We are developing, in particular, these, uh, these genomic abilities so that we can do real-time monitoring, that is, say, maybe even 24-7 monitoring of ourselves and our environments. Uh, we have instances where the earlier that you detect an outbreak of a, of a new or an old uh, pathogen, especially food-borne ones, such as in these cases here, uh, the, f the faster that you can nip it in the bud and anticipate uh, potential changes. So an example of a technology which is not yet a 24-7 a technology that everybody has uh, alongside their cell phone, uh, but is getting very close, is this uh, so-called nanopore technology that uh, is one of the slowest of, of our otherwise breathtaking technologies. This is something that I started working on in 1988, um, actually right here. Um, and, but it now is handheld. Uh, it's based on these little chips that can detect uh, DNA as it goes past these uh, nano machines, uh, the polymerase and pores. The details are not for today. Uh, but the point is, you might be able to monitor the, the, the pathogens, allergens, um, composition of your food, and so forth. As good as our food labeling is, I, I would argue it could be uh, much better, and uh, this would, might be part of that, that solution. Uh, it is definitely the case that our interaction with food is not the one-size-fits-all that we often get from large studies. It is a highly individualized one. So in addition to technology uh, uh, for reading uh, our environment and our genomes, and our genomes in our environment, uh, we have the ability to change it. We have changed our, our own genetic destiny. There are now 2,000 gene therapies in for phase one, two, and three clinical trials where people are changing their own genomes. But this, this is just uh, uh, documentation of possibly the, the most specific of all therapies ever, which is uh, sometimes called CRISPR, sometimes called the CRISPR craze. It's a class of nucleases uh, that, uh, where RNA uh, finds its way to DNA with protein as a mediator. And this can be made extraordinarily specific. It's, just, it's specific to about one part in 10 to the 15th base pairs so far, and it's getting better by methods such as these. We can use this not only to change human beings, uh, uh, as is already happening in, in, in uh, other gene therapies, but to change uh, our environment and what we eat. Uh, there are many things that are already being done by combinations of classical and so-called genetic modifications, which I think in the end result in the same kind of DNA in these organisms, just some are easier than others. And some of these are a response to environmental changes like heat and drought tolerance. Some of them, uh, all of them need to be uh, inspected for safety and efficacy over short and long periods of time. And some of, the, some of them are opportunities to deal with natural risks. Uh, we not only create human risks, but we have plenty of natural ones. There are uh, synthetic uh, and, and natural pesticides. There are pa pesticides pleasant plants. Some of those are also carcinogens, many of them. 
and there's uh, 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 many opportunities for improving this. In our uh, uh, meat, we have uh, things that uh, many people have uh, strong reactions to, not everyone, uh, and there are cases where it can become uh, a normal uh, animal can become uh, spontaneously turn into one that produces uh, an infectious disease like a prion. These are deletable, so both of these genes have been deleted from various uh, animals and without consequence to the animal, but with great uh, safety increase. And then uh, finally we have this issue of uh, pests, and, and these can be animal pests, they can be vectors for disease, they can be uh, 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 invasive species that interfere with agriculture or with other quality of life issues. And so we've been exploring gene drives, uh, and this is one illustrated that's intended for reducing malaria, but there are other ones for other uh, pests uh, or vectors. And, and the basic idea uh, is that it's a, it's a synthetic selfish DNA that doesn't just hop all over everywhere randomly, it goes to a specific place, and every time two insects or other pests uh, breed, um, all of the offspring get the, the selfish DNA, which in this case is also not just selfish, but it's delivering something that humans uh, find highly desirable, like resistance to malaria. So the mosquito becomes resistant to malaria, and, the, and then it is not transmitted to humans, and Malaria is like smallpox in that if we ever eliminate it once, it's eliminated forever because humans are the only resource, uh, the only natural uh, reservoir for that species. And this can be generalized to a variety of other invasive species and pests, reducing our, our need for uh, pesticides and herbicides um, and so on. We have a, 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 a cohort, which is an amazing cohort, um, where we can test the interaction between genes, environments, and traits and look at personalization of foods, uh, drugs, and other uh, things that impact our quality of life. This is the world's only open access data sets, and, and, they're, and they've been available for years, and I urge you to take a look at them. Look, just search for Personal Genome Project or GET, and then uh, we have experiments uh, in, on, on the environment as well. Thank, Thank you. you so much.